what's going on fontaine here vip soundlab.com just had a member request in regards to how to map their drum sounds to the zone so just for the video i'll just use three sounds because we don't want the video to run too long so i'm going to grab these three sounds here which is just basically a hi-hat a kick and a snare and when i grab them see how it makes this icon here fam you just slide it over like this okay and when you move your mouse up or down you can control the range on that so I'm gonna drop it on C3 right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it all the way down. I'm gonna take all three of these sounds and just bam, stick it on one note like that. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, because I just wanna show you again, two examples. This is one example I'm gonna show you how you can trigger uh, using, let me scroll over right here, the velocity low and the velocity high. So it kinda gets like a round robin effect, but not really because depending on how hard you hit your pad or your MIDI controller is what's going to trigger, you know, the actual sounds. And on the second part of the video, I'll show you how you can bring in a whole lot of sounds and you actually can come here and you can right click and you can press map as drum kit. But when you press map as drum kit nine times out of 10, it puts them in a manner that you might not be feeling it because everything might be a little bit out of whack. So what I do, um, I'll get into that in the second part of the video, but what I do basically is I assign the key range to each drum sound and I'll show you how you can do that. So then that way when you drop them in, the machine can't do anything but other than what you tell it to do and it'll put your your uh, sounds where you want them to be. And I'll show you that in the second part of the video. But anyway, let's go ahead and do this right quick. Okay, what I'm doing right now is I'm just separating these sounds right quick. And you see, this is the kick right here. When you pull it out, you can read it a lot easier, you know, if you get confused on that. So I'm gonna put the kick maybe in a lower range, okay? And this one here is what? This is a hi-hat. I'll put this one more towards the middle range. All right, so I'm gonna put these on C3, we'll move this one up a little bit. We'll put the kick more down here. And last but not least, the snare. We'll put this one towards the, the higher range. Now in your hardware controller, if you're using the MK1, MK2, you can press the sample icon and you can take that little, you know, little arrow and roll it all the way to the right. And you can control the velocity lows and highs like that with the uh, the hardware controller, the map, you know, like this here. But again, just for the sake of the video without running too long, but you guys are probably really familiar with that anyway. I'm just going to put it like this. Okay. So now what happens is when I tap on my, my keyboard, as you can see, when I tap a little bit softer, we just get in the kick. And if I hit a little bit harder, I get the snare kind of in the middle. Okay, so that's pretty much how that works. You know, basically depending on how hard you hit your pad or your keyboard is what's gonna trigger uh, the sounds. And it also can work in another way, like um, let's say for example, you see that? Because the notes are getting triggered by the velocity. So if I was to move any of these around, it would change the sound. All right, so that's pretty much it for this part of the tutorial. Let's go ahead and get into the second part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to map these drum sounds out here to the zone. 
or rather the, the zone range. So I'm going to highlight the first one, hold shift on the last one. And you notice when I drag these over, okay, again, if I move the mouse up or down, I can control how far I want to map these across the zone. So if I want to get them as tight as possible, I'll do it like this here. Okay. So let's say I could drop them anywhere. It doesn't make a difference, but if I do it like this, and let's say I right click on it and press map as drum kit, you see how machine automatically slid those over, which is a good thing. But the problem with that is, is when I go over here to my MIDI controller and start tapping on my keys, see my kicks are more up here. And my hi-hats are more here. Well, actually it's even worse than I thought. The snares are over here. And my hi-hats are way back here. So that's something that I don't want to do. So I'm going to show you how you can fix that and you can make machine assign these uh, the way that you want them to be. So how you do that is basically you go to the folder where these drum sounds are right here. I labeled it as drum samples. Okay. And let me just highlight this a little bit more. Okay. So if I want my kicks more towards the lower range, now you would have to put in the work, you would have to press rename and you'd have to put a C dash two right there. So for the, you know, for the sake of the video, I want to run too long, you know, going through each one of these, that would take so long. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to do it like this here. I'm going to press C2 and I'm just going to write in kick. Now, of course, you know, you'd have to keep yours neat and organized because you don't want to lose your, your drum sound name. So you're going to put this C2 in front of the name of each individual kick drum, hi-hat or, or uh, yeah, hi-hat or snare. So press like that. Those are the kicks. I'm going to put the hi-hats, let's say C3, and I'll write hi-hat, like that, and for snares, rename those, we'll put the snares, C4, let's do that. And we'll type in snares. All right, so now we got the kicks in the lower range, the hi-hats towards the mid, and the snares towards the higher higher range. So now what we do is we go back to machine. This is the folder where I got it. So I'll just click up, because I'm on the desktop. And you see how it's renamed. So it's basically refreshing it. All right, so now what happens is when I do the same exact thing, and drag them into the map. Now when I go like this, you know, again, it doesn't matter where I drop them because I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna press map as drum kit. Okay, so now when I do that, let me uh, zoom in on this a little bit more. Now you see when I tap on my first note, which is C3, the kicks are where I want them to be. Followed by the hi hats again, as you can see right here, it's a little more where I want it to be towards the middle. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a lot more. And I snares are up here more towards C4. Alright, so I hope that helps you out fam and let me go ahead and zoom out of this right quick. Now, keep in mind that when you are dragging the drum sounds in as I've done here, let's say for example, if I move them over here for a minute, okay, and let's say I was bringing in, I don't know, some other drum sounds like this right here, you know, then I'm putting these here and then I have some more sounds here and you know again I'm using the same sounds but I'm just trying to make an example okay so however many sounds that you can put on this zone range down here or this, or this zone map is how many sounds you can put in so you, it's possible for you to put man you know a ton of sounds I think it's like 128 I'm not really sure about that I think it's like 128 so that's that's one way you know or another example would be let's say if you 
let's say if you were chopping up some samples or what, whatever the case may be and you want to have 128 slices or sample chops on one pad this is how you would set it up or the, or the best way to set it up actually and then if you're on your hardware controller you can press your pad mode and keyboard and you can trigger the samples that way all right fam so i hope that helps you out getting your drum sounds mapped out